Hello everyone. I'm back with another chapter of Geography, Class 6, NCRT. Chapter 7, Our Country, India. So India is a country of vast geographical expanse. What does it mean? Well, this sentence is only uh, sensible if you try to see the country from a zoomed out position. Because most of the places like Himalayas, Arabian Sea and Bay of Bengal and Indian Ocean, these are not visited by an average citizen just like you and me. So therefore this sentence will only make sense if you see the country from a zoomed out point of view. So India is a peninsula. What is a peninsula? Peninsula is a place which is surrounded by water from three sides. Because if there is a water on the fourth side that becomes an island. So India is a peninsula. Another important thing that we need to remember from here is the distance between Kashmir to Kanyakumari is 3200 km. Remember this. The a vertical line from north to south of the Indian con Indian country is 3200 kilometers. It's easy to remember 3200 and east to west from Arunachal Pradesh to Kutch is 29. So 29 and 32 should be easy to remember and Arunachal Pradesh is the uh, eastern border for us and the western border for our country is Kutch which is in Gujarat. And then we have one great Indian desert called Rajasthan and then we have lofty mountains then the northern plains the uneven plateau, the coasts and the islands present in diversity of landform. And not to forget, we also have a great variety in the climate, vegetation, wildlife, as well as in the language and culture. So currently we have uh, 22 Indian official languages and 29 states and 7 union territories. So apart from landforms, climate, vegetations, language and culture, we are also the second most populous country in the world after China. So currently India's population is 1.25 billion people. So that makes us the second largest country with population in the world. So now let's talk about locational setting. It means where is currently India located? How do we recognize India if we have to see the entire globe as a whole? So, so India is located in the Northern Hemisphere, that is above the equator. The Tropic of Cancer is 23.30 North, as I said North, because it is above the equator. So had it been below, it would be South. This is not much of a importance, but Tropic of Cancer, just remember that it passes through India, that is uh, from Gujarat, Kolkata. So that is 23.3 North, remember this. India extends between 68.7 degree east and 97.25 degree east longitude. If we divide the world into eastern and western hemisphere, which hemisphere would India belong to? Due to great longitudinal extent of about 29 degree, there could be a wide difference in local time of places located at two extreme points of India. As such, the difference between these two points would be about two hours. Unlike other country, India follows one time zone. Uh, but there are countries like Russia which follows nine time zones. So we don't have to do something like that. So here is some trivial fact. The sun rises about two hours earlier in the east, that is Arunachal Pradesh, than the west Gujarat. This is quite obvious if you see, because the difference between them is 2,900 kilometers. So there, so we are expected to see such a change of two hours. We have already read earlier why the local time of longitude is 82.3 degree east. So we know, right, where does this point passes through? This passes through Allahabad in UP. And that is also the Indian Standard Time. Now let's read about few neighbors of India. There are seven countries that share land boundaries with India. So we have seven neighbors and they are Pakistan, Afghanistan, China, Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh and Myanmar or Myanmar. However you want to pronounce that as. So coming to page number three, we have a lovely picture of Indian political map. You can see all the state boundaries and also the capital cities associated with the respective states. So coming to page number four, here we'll read about a little bit of political and administrative divisions. So what do you mean by administrative divisions? Administrative divisions are done in order to make that country functionable. So if it is not divided into such factors, it would be very difficult to run a huge country like India with a population of 1.25 billion people. So therefore we need proper administrative divisions. And uh, for administrative purposes, the country is divided into eight, 28 states and seven union territory. Actually it's 29 state. So the 29th state is Telangana, which was formed in 2014. Delhi is the national capital. The state have been mainly on the basis of languages. Rajasthan is the largest state and Goa is the smallest state in terms of area. So we'll read about this 
detail as to uh, how many states came into existence, when it came into existence, what was the reason behind their division in on the basis of languages. This all will be covered in the section polity later on. So let's read about physical divisions. India is marked by a diversity of physical features such as mountain, plateau, plains, coasts and islands. So if you look at this map, how you will see on top we have the northern mountains and then slowly we have the northern plains and then we go on to the west side we have the desert that is uh, Rajasthan which is also called the Thad Desert go in the middle in that fourth category where the orange orangish area that's the peninsula plateau so most of the plateaus and ranges are here we will see Deccan Plateau you will see Satpura range and then you have Aravali range and then you have the coastal plains around around the area of Gujarat and coming down till Kerala again going from Tamil Nadu to Odisha and then we have the islands which are Andaman and Nicobar Island and Lakshadweep Islands so some of the east flowing rivers in India are Mahanadi, Godavari, Krishna and Kaveri. They drain into the Bay of Bengal. All the rivers that drain into Bay of Bengal, they are called the east flowing rivers. Now these rivers have formed fertile deltas at their mouth. The Sundarban Delta is formed where the Ganga and Brahmaputra flow into the Bay of Bengal. So what is a delta? A delta is a landform which is formed near the end of the river where it reaches the ocean, where it meets the ocean. The final phase where a river meets the ocean, there there is a small landform which is formed due to continuous movement of soil by the flowing river. That portion is called delta. So coming to the 8th page of this chapter, we have two groups of island. They are Lakshadweep Islands which is located in the Arabian Sea and then the Andaman and Nicobar Island which is there in the Bay of Bengal. So remember this, Lakshadweep Island is famous for Coral Island. It is located off the coast of Kerala. So this is also a very important question from an examination point of view. Uh, which all places in India you will see corals? So corals are found in Gulf of Kutch which is near Gujarat and then we have Lakshadweep and then we have Gulf of Manar which is in between Sri Lanka and Tamil Nadu and then Andaman Nicobar Islands and if you want to know the group of islands which were affected by the tsunami in 2004 they are part of Andaman and Nicobar Island because tsunami came from the southern eastern part of the country so let's move on to the exercises so the first question is name the major physical division of India so they are asking about the physical division. So the physical division of India are mountain, plains, plateau, and then you have coasts, and then you have islands. The second question is, India shares its land boundaries with seven countries. Name them. So let's go from west to east. They are Pakistan, and then you have Afghanistan, and then you have China, Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, and Myanmar or Myanmar. So which two major rivers fall in the Arabian Sea? So we have read about this. The only two rivers that flow towards the Western Ghats are Narmada and Tapi. So remember this NT or TN Tamil Nadu, something like that, you know, just make your own mnemonics. So I remember it as Tamil Nadu. So T for Tapi and for Narmada. Fourth question, name the delta formed by the Ganga and Brahmaputra. Let's recall what is a delta. A delta is a small landform which is made at the mouth of the of the river where it meets the ocean it's a small landform so that is called as delta so the famous delta which is formed by ganga and brahmaputra is sundarban delta which is in west bengal fifth question how many states and union territories are there in india so we have 29 states and seven union territories remember that it's 29 not 28 the 29th state is telangana which was formed in 2014 sixth question why do a large number of people live in the northern plains? Because there lies a lot of tributaries of Ganga, Brahmaputra and Sin, sorry, Indus River. Where there is more tributaries, there will be more rivers. And when there is and where there is more river, there will be a lot of civilization, a lot of people. Why is Lakshadweep known as Coral Island? So Lakshadweep is made of tiny marine animals known as polyps. Okay? So when these creatures, these marine animals die, they form something called coral. And these corals, after so many years, together they form a huge landmass which is formed into a coral island. And do you want to know another cool thing about Lakshadweep? It is just 32 kilometers. That's it. You see this picture? That's it. That is what is Lakshadweep Island. With this, we have come to an end of another chapter in geography. Thank you guys for listening and I hope you found this useful. Make sure to subscribe. Bye.